How's it going? You all right? So yeah, I thought I'd wear a white shirt today um, to try and combat the darkness that's inevitably going to happen with uh, talking to a person that also loves to wear all black. Um, Something Above 90 is joining me today, and equally, I know the buttons are a bit too much, but this mic's really sensitive, so the further away from me, the better, if that makes sense. Um, but also, you know, we could bond on tattoos once Supna joins me. Hi, Fozia, how are you? Um, so yeah, Supna Bhavnani is someone that's um, been a long, long-term friend of mine. We've met uh, at raves in India at various, um, in fact, yeah, various festivals and things. But more importantly, um, she's kind of utilised every platform she's gotten to perpetuate something new and positive and here she is kept awake by me because it's, it's 11 30 in india right now and she's in the midst of a film festival um bless her hi sapu you look fantastic hi hi <laughs> how's I'm it going not, uh as drunk as i want to be uh-huh that's alice hi alice okay then hi oopsie daisy uh, why One are second. you wearing white one of my lights is going <laughs> ballistic. One second. Well, I thought because I was talking to you, this light has just gone mad. Hang on, turn this off. Um, the, uh, the reason why I thought I'd wear white is because we're normally both all in black, no? and yeah. I thought I'd make a difference. And also, you're halfway through a film festival. So I thought, uh-huh, if I was going to a film festival, I'd wear this shirt. Film festival? <laughs> film oh, move, move your head up a little bit so I can see your face. You don't want to see your tits? No, I see tits all the time. I have my own. <laughs> Okay, fine. Is this better now? That is better. How are you? I'm so good. And I'm so bad at this live chatting shit. But you know, you've it's been me, basket. Me just for one year. Okay, no. Finally, I said, fuck it. I am. I have a film festival to plug. Let me use you fucking Norm. <laughs> you can use me anytime you like. It's totally tell, fine. Tell all your UK blokes to watch Wench Film Festival. Check out some killer women uh, directors and their films. I like that you think that all of my friends are just blokes. Um, yeah, aren't they? Shut up! I have loads <laughs> of female friends. What is wrong with you? Bakwas FM over here. Oh, See? hi guys. So many women. Hello ma'am. How are you? I am good, sir. How are you? Oh, Big up Priti. Hi. Lovely to see you. Warp in the chat. Warp Spaces. Hello, Warp Spaces. What's up? Pretty is amazing. Big up warp spaces. Yes, indeed. Hello, everybody. <laughs> thank you for joining. And this is like, it's, it's late night in, in India. So thank you for staying awake. Uh, hey, Sydney Foundation's me. here, man. What's going on? Sorry, I just thought I'd give a shout out to all these people. Totally Excellent. Awesome. Hey, Raga, what's up? Okay, sorry, Nervi. Let's not it's all right. No, please continue. Please continue. <laughs> I, I'm happy just watching you say hello to people. Hi, Jyoti. I can do it too, bastard. See? Ah. <laughs> no. Your hair's grown, bugger. Oh, shit. Hold on, yeah? Let me just... Let Why don't me... you... Yeah, put your phone somewhere secure rather than holding it doing this. No, no, no. Uh, well, if you're going to have a drink, then... Yes, of course. Have... Vicky, I am drinking the whiskey as standard. It's like my bourbon selection. Okay, yes. so hold on, dude. Let... Okay, I didn't know I could, like, do this, yeah? Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's my, own, my, my own channel. You can do whatever the fuck you want. Swearing also. Okay, hold on. I'll just get a glass. I'll be right back. You can hear Sapna's cats mewing in the background. Okay, hi. Hi, I can see your face better now as well. Yeah, Excellent. that's because also I'm not holding the, the camera, in my, the phone in my hand. Um, yeah, hi guys. It's uh, only 11.40, whatever in India. 11.34. Right. I kind of go to sleep by like 9, 9.30. I wake up at 5 in the morning. So this is way past my bedtime. And you know what? The way we met was that we would go out raging until like five in the morning. Yeah, well, I was young and, you know, picking up See, men. you still are. What is this nonsense? I don't pick up men anymore. I don't need to go out. That was is like that the only I reason you went out was to pick up men? Chi. Yeah. I, that's nonsense. Yeah. I've, I've seen you dancing I'm to my kidding. sets with I'm abandon, yeah, with I'm wild kidding. abandon. No. I'm kidding. Everybody mm. knows that. I just talk like I'm all like man, man picker upper, which I'm not even that person. I just like like to play play hard. I'm so badass. Do you remember the tone we came up with, by the way? What? 
when uh like so there's cheers by the way cheers lovely to see you thank you for joining me by the way and staying uh this uh, awake for me but do you remember the term we came up with on a night out which was when uh you block a dude when one blued so i can't even speak when one blued when one dude blocks another dude from talking to a girl it's cock blocked but we discussed and we came up with this term that if a woman blocks another woman from being with a dude it's cock locked oh yes oh yes she cock locked him cock locked oh yes correct i remember now no are you taking the fucking piss up my accent <laughs> Listen, of course Basket. I So, tell me, how's fucking lockdown? Is oh like shit. shit. I've been I mean, I've been doing these for a year to stay like on a on an even keel. Aren't you bored? Like what the fuck are you doing? Talking I talk to, to my friends, you bastard. I talk to my friends on the internet every Wednesday. You At could this just time, pick up the phone and call me. It doesn't this have This is to be This is more fun. This is way more fun. Okay, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Cool. It'd be fun if you were like naked and shit. Naked talking, I'm sure. Show oh, boobs. Is that new? No, That's... I've had this for you. I've had this since I first met you. Oh yeah, I've never seen your chest before. Sorry, you're always covered. I, I mean, you know, I'm one of the few girls that didn't do NERM. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? I think honestly, I'm basically asexual at this stage. There's no way that anyone's done me. I know. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. By the way, guys, basket is not that guy. By the way, uh, what you want? A uni unisex salon? Okay, sure. That's a good idea. You, um, by the way, just want to clarify. Going back to how we met, just want to clarify yeah. that you, for years, were the only person on the planet that would allow to touch my hair because I'm balding so badly. that i had to i have to have sort of strategic there's placement a, there's a very secret spot in norm's hair right there and where i plug in the usb to recharge and also the horns grow out <laughs> you kind of have to just do this and then then you're cool right it's like this yeah there there you go <laughs> yeah there you go is the norm do and actually speaking of which there's also one makeup artist in this chat in her chair big up cast who uh, does my makeup in india so if anyone's joining wondering what the fuck is going on every week i speak to a friend across the world who is a badass creative that has seen me be a drunken ass before and this week it is sub number 90 who is joining me for a conversation that is what you're watching yes i think it was a drum roll though i mean you know what is that a drum roll yeah there for some drum and fucking bass what is that exactly so this is it going back to, i remember the i remember vividly I met yeah. you when I was DJing in India in like 2002. Yeah, Shiva Sound System days, exactly. Yeah. And you were such a massive supporter of what we were doing, um, and also a fellow punk, which was just fucking great. Um, yeah, sure. But yeah. uh, you should be playing some of that Shiva Sound System shit for people, man. Because I'll you don't do that kind of shit anymore. You become. Like I fucking great. do. Of course, I You're do. You. Boring. And 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 your friend D, what is D doing these days? D Listen, oi, bastard, bastard! Making good music. And I shut up. Shit, you guys are making. Can right I now. can I just can I just defend <laughs> myself here, right? Fuck D, he's all become yogi and all. And I shut up. So actually, I want to clarify that I the last thing I did in India was in yeah. 2019 in March, which was for Budex, which was like a full on drum and bass, hip hop, and techno thing. And you know what you did? You didn't yeah. fucking come out because you were too busy. I have to go to bed and I have to get up at five and do yoga. Shut up. Yeah, but you're playing some shit these days, man. Put on some old the uh, uh, Shiva Sound. What do you mean playing some shit, you bastard? Yeah, for these lovely people who have tuned in. You mean for you, taste, you selfish son. bastard? Ha. Huh? Give okay, them a fine. taste, son. Fine, I will. Taste. I will. I will. Come but on, actually, taste. honestly, Sapna was like a massive proponent of our come weird on, sound. Come on, let's do it. Let's do it. Are you guys ready to headbang cuz that's what we're going to do right about Really? Okay, so anyway, that's how we met. I'll play it in the background while you're still sort of busy as if you're in a car just jerking along. <laughs> Fuck you know. So yeah, I'll play it in the background, right? But yeah, so we do this thing your salon obviously um was amazing. Alas, that is no more because yes. of lockdown, right? Yeah, but you know, it was no more mentally uh, a long time ago because I I just uh, decided I want to be a filmmaker now. 
I wanted to cut film instead of hair, so yeah. that was, anyways, happening for a few years now. Mm. And I just used lockdown as an excuse to kind of shut it down. So But, it wasn't a tragic thing. It was it was inevitable anyway, was it? Oh, I'm elated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. There's, oh, I, I'm not feeling sad. I shut it down. There's not, none of that. Um, in a way, I feel really light, and I don't have like 80 million people I have to take care of and big rent on my head. And mm. now. I Just be an indie filmmaker who has no money, and you know, paying paying for my films by myself, blah blah blah. So it's like uh, cool in a way. Like I just finished my feature film, self funded. Awesome. Um, um, yeah. So let's see how that goes. But you know, the, the the interesting thing is, I've known you for years and years and years. Like obviously, you know, I, in fact, one thing I've got to be very, I am very proud of is that I was one of the very few. If if the only musician linked from the Mad or What website for years, it was just like, huh? Yeah, Follow Nerm. It was I was just like, what the fuck? Where did this come from? <laughs> bizarre. Yeah, that's true. That's true. True. I like what, but but equally, like you know, like knowing you for years, having raved with you, had many coffees with you, had you um, educate me on various things in society, you know, which which I love about how we communicate, which is like, if any of my assertions get Overly ageist or classist or um, whatever, you just correct me. It's fucking great, bunny. <laughs> Bastard. But anyway, the thing is, right? The thing is, is that you've also tried so many other creative fields. So you've got the, you know, the hairdressing thing. Obviously, you're successful at that. But you did like fashion, music, all these things, and you seem to have really zeroed in on film. Because I watched um, Sindustan, and it's fucking brilliant. Yeah, thank you. That It's was fucking so brilliant. That was really sweet of you. Really. Um, Why is it sweet? I don't want to watch the film my, like my friend did, especially if I'm talking to her. You know. I I mean yeah I mean but you could have also watched it like a year ago since it's been out since that. I mean long. that's true. That's true. But the thing is, is that if I'd have watched it then, I wouldn't have been able to talk to you about it. Guys, what a, have you tried? El Zephytopus wants to know. No drugs ever. Yeah, exactly. Nothing. Yeah, exactly. Wine, no. my friend. Yeah. But what, yeah, what, so I mean, filmmaking, like, oh, like that—that that was your debut released film, right? As like a long form, long, long form uh, debut release, or not? I think it was my first. Yes, it was my first feature. But yeah. I mean, you know, when I used to date Chinku Ariji, yeah. uh, I actually started by making uh, music videos for him. That's how I started. Yeah. And uh -huh. Um, that was over like some twelve years ago. So mm -hmm. I started, but I think I did three music videos. Then I did a short film, and slowly, slowly from there is something that I just knew even back then that this is where I want to go. Yeah, and it's then, really well uh, fucking done. Like I mean, with all due respect, like my friends, our friends create shit all the time, right? And sometimes there's a lot of uh, what's the word? There's a lot of wheat and chaff to get through. Do you know what I mean? So watching this, I was, I fucking wept. You know what I mean? Like there's times when I cried, and like the one shot at the end of your face, I just started bawling. Ah. It's like it's such a fuck. It moved me to fuck. It was amazing. Like and it's Sindustan is the documentary. But what like it hasn't, like it, it's not available apart from one website. So it's not as broad as it could be. I don't feel. Well, it's not widely available as it could be. Yeah, I think that because uh, Netflix in India don't, don't really take uh, films that are non-commercial um, in a way, mm. and documentaries. A lot of people think documentaries, first of all, are not even cinema. They consider that as reject shit, and mm. that, that's something also we want to. Because as a filmmaker, you bring your craft even to a documentary. It is a film. So mm. uh, I got Movie Saints, which is a fabulous platform, though. And I'm very happy with it. In fact, mm. the film festival is also on Movie Saints online, so it's been a great uh, relationship I've built with them, and just to grow bigger now. But with my new film, uh, once again, it's a little, um, little pricey. I don't uh -huh. think commercial platforms going to play uh, my new film either. Right. So probably end up on Movie Saints as well. So that's the that's the biggest problem. Um, Like it's a genre film, my next film. Uh -huh. uh, hoping some uh, genre film festivals, some 
Fantasia, fantastic film festivals will take them. But in India, it's like if you're not doing commercial, it's really hard. It's really mm. hard to get funding. It's really hard for you to make it. But you know, fuck that. Uh, who cares? As long as uh, the underground, uh, definitely, this is one of the biggest problems in India. Mm. There is no underground. And if there is no underground, you don't have anything. Because well, I, I would yeah. argue the opposite because every, and I would because I'm a privileged English person that comes into India. Is there anything that I want to make in India that's remotely underground? It's more feasible there somehow? Really? Yeah, but yeah. what I'm saying is, uh, where is the underground? Where are you showing that? Oh, I mean, documentary-wise or film-wise? No, no, just in general. Like with music, there is mm. an underground now, you know, uh, in India. I mean, and we've been on that whole scene for years, which is probably yeah, why. Yeah, music has been really good. But mm. when it comes to art, when it comes to uh, film, there really isn't an underground scene. And that needs to kind of happen, you know what I mean? Mm. There's only a big mainstream a Bollywood that kind of infiltrates uh, into everything. It infiltrates... Mm what you wear, it infiltrates into what you think. It's kind of silly, like your hair. It, uh, there is no other influence in, in India. Like Bollywood and cricket can shut our country down. And, and you have been at the forefront of both because you've worked in advertising, you've cut like, you know, like it, it's astounding, I think, that how you're so, um, I hate using this word, but I'm using this because we're talking in public, but you're so like fucking edgy or whatever but you still have like these these tendrils that reach into the mainstream you know what i mean right i mean uh, i think the only reason i got popular is because of the way i looked i think uh when really I came... not because you cut like balding people's hairs very well and things. no i mean it's shallow it was i came to india in 2002 i looked like this they're like who the fuck is this girl like that let's put on everything Wait, 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 hang on, hang on. You came to India in 2002? Yeah. What? Hang on, wait, I'll put a pause on that. I just want to shout out Hit then. Thank you very much. That's really sweet of you to mention. Um, and oh. Oh, there's someone in the comments saying that I introduced them to an artist called Vandana who's amazing and they're working together now. Um, yeah? Okay, good. And he yeah. wants to do some killer art for Sapna too. Well, there you go. You can check. Okay, sure. I there like you go. <laughs> so, your whole story, I, I mean, I, forgive me, because I was in India from touring from like 2000, 2001. You came back to India in 2002? That's right. Wow, I never knew that. That's right. I was in America for like... Ah, America, atta, huh? And I remember, actually, now you've mentioned it, I remember asking you where you got tattoos done for D, and you said that they're all American. Yeah, I just lived there for like, um, 14 years uh, huh. because I was just really bored um, and then I moved back to India which was uh, a good move back then and now you're like what the fuck am I doing here maybe I need to come out of here again but then where do you go every place is so fucked up I mean there isn't like a good place anymore so need yeah. to find ground space well, I mean, again, that's the thing. The thing that brought me back to India as a fucking tourist, because I know I'm a tourist in this, was the ability to make anything in my head or the, the sort of the path of least resistance to make something in my head come true. And you've done that with your film festival. Yes, I have. I have. So there are positives. There are. Oh, no, no. There are a lot of positives. But the, the point is being, like I said, um, if you look at the cinema from uh, India, mm. uh, you will not see really a whole lot made by women. Uh, maybe three, four of the mainstream kind. Ooh, I hear some music. So the whole goal was, uh, I remember once there was this manil and with four men. And all of these four men were known for making films about women empowerment. Okay. And I'm like, dude, you just sat on a manil talking about films. And you've not even invited a fucking woman on this manner. And you, you're popular. Why? Because you're making films about us poor women. Yeah, I find that so fucking ridiculous. But, you know, you've taken me to task on that. So there's a project I'm working on, which I've run past you before. And ah, I think I, I shout. We can't talk about it, though. Shush, 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 shush. I, I don't. Sorry. Yeah. No, what? But it's, it's the one that I talked to you about. 
right. about the video, the music video concept I shared with you. Yeah. And, and the fascinating thing was that analyzing it, there was a whole uh, a concept behind it, which, and I hate the term female empowerment anyway. Like that's, I'm, it's just fucking, it seems a bit like a marketing thing, which I don't want to go near. Um, but it was obviously designed to readdress the balance. But after a conversation with you, I realized that it's basically three dudes doing that. And we need to fucking diversify at the top before we even start trickling down. You know, that's just fucking nonsense. It'd be super hypocritical not to address that at the very yeah. start. Yeah. yeah. You know. Correct. So thank you for thank that you. lesson. Thank you. So Ooh. that's how I started when from the festival. So I'm tired of people saying, where are the women directors? So I thought, you know what? Here you go. This is first edition. And you've just seen 41 director. 41. Mm. That's like, I don't, I don't want to hear it again. Where are the female directors? Here's 41. Next year, they're going to be 100 of them. And after that, so on. You know, it, 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 it's shocking to me that, that that kind of stuff still needs to be done. Um, because obviously I work in the kind of, in the, the racial space of being brown over here and having to fucking do that whole sort of representation for brown people because we're underrepresented. And then the argument um, against that is that, well, if everyone, you know, surely it should be on merit. And you're like, motherfucker, the system wasn't built on merit. The system was built to the people that built the system. So it needs to be corrected. Right. And I can't believe that has to be explained to people. It's fucked up. It's like, ah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's like uh, uh, you, you um, I mean, my, my biggest issue is I don't really care that you know, women are better than men. This is not what I'm really talking about. I'm just talking about that we exist, you know, and we, of course. we, we do make films and it's really sad that I know so many people here who could not even uh, name five women directors. So I'm just assuming just with my film festival, at least now you could name five. I mean, that's like job, job done, you know, mm. nothing. Else. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm completely, um, very excited by the way that's going. And, hmm. um, today is day six. Or, yeah, six of the festival. Yeah. And it's, been, it's really been an amazing ride to see if we could do this. And uh, hopefully after this, we can, I can start to direct my new film. I'm excited to see it because I, I think, that honestly, the, the artistic sort of approach to your, to, to Sindustan was like, I was blown away. Like, the, there's a lot of, there's often times when you watch documentaries where it's just insert B-roll here, right? But with yeah. you, there's a very, it's an obvious intention to every fucking shot. And I was just like, ah, oh. and it just fucking cut me every time. It was amazing. So thank you for that. It was amazing. My aunt has become um, so popular because of her syndicati and her cooking. And like press calls her up and she's like, thank you, you've made me a star. And of course, my legs. Uh, my legs. Uh, the legs thing. I want to get to the legs thing, actually. But there's, there's one thing I want to go back to, which is that whole sort of balance between being you and the mainstream shit. Because I could never do that here. When, when the mainstream stuff started knocking and I started doing some of it here, um, I fucking hated it. I just couldn't engage in that world. I was like, the underground is where I need to live. With you, you've been able to straddle both and do it in, you know, in, in a way at the same time as being attacked for it, which is quite fucking brave. Mm, um, I, don't, I don't know if I was really attacked for it. I think people are too afraid of me to kind of attack me. Uh, <laughs> and I wish that wasn't the case. I mean, it's like been the story of my life. All the men that I've always dated have, I have asked out because they're so deathly afraid of me. Um, mm. So I and and besides, if someone attacked me, I don't really um, would even give them that much attention to mm. them. I am here because you attacked me. I, I mean, that's too much important place on that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? So um, I mean, like, just to, to, to give you an example, is that like your column in midday? So midday is like a daily paper in, in India, in Bombay. So it's a yeah. regional <laughs> daily newspaper, and you had a column that yeah. just fucking tackled the whole like just slayed the demons and took on the holy cows as you fucking saw fit which was pretty badass i was just like how the hell is that how is sapna writing this shit on the daily and it's fine 
Yeah, I think that that was so much fun too because I had just broken up with my ex uh, husband, and he was sorry. Like, which one? One, two, or three? It was. Uh, there are four, by the way. A four. Okay. Oh, you you are not keeping track, my friend. Of my Acha. husband. <laughs> I mean, I mean, clearly, I'm not keeping count of your husbands. I mean, shit. What am I like? Some sort of husband counter? I don't think so. I think this guy was number three, yeah. And he used to just fucking like, like be like shit and bricks. Oh my god, she's gonna write shit about me. Oh my god, she's gonna write shit about me. I don't do it. And sure enough, every Sunday he would just get battered in the newspaper. Man, and I just loved it, loved it. But um, yeah, you're right. And it was first it was Mumbai era for like five years. And maybe. Okay. But it was um, a fun column. It was once again very early back in the day when nobody really. तू तो लेस्बियन है ना अरे वाह यार. I'm just I'm going to block straight away. Bye. मैं बाइसेक्सुअल हूँ. Blocked. अरे. <laughs> oh my God. Bisexual. I just love brothers. <laughs> I'm a bisexual. Yeah, man. Me and my brothers get down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Fuck it out. Blocked. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Carry on. Ah uh, no. Yeah. So um. I think that writing in the paper back then, and people still remember that. And um, uh, I got a book deal based on that. But my fabulous publishers have been very kind because I'm five years behind on my book, and they're still like letting me keep my deposit. And I'm like, thanks. <laughs> um, but the book is coming. It's coming. It's coming next. Here I am writing it as we speak, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be good. We're gonna talk in the middle of in the middle of a film festival and your feature film debut. So. Yeah, 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 of course, and and my new film, which is gonna be VR, by the way, uh, and it's gonna be all of that. A chat. Well, actually, there's the other thing. So, I mean, there was you know how we met, how we kind of you know hung out, raving and stuff, and then the thing that. Really tipped it into more serious things was you being in Nirbhaya, which fucked me up massively because there was you and two other friends of ours uh, and that I know personally in the play, and I didn't know anything about it at all. Yeah, yeah. And and I and you guys were 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 doing um, so Nirbhaya the play uh, was in rehearsals at the Waterman's Gallery, I think. Is that right? Yeah, Waterman's Riverside. Riverside, Riverside. Some some sort of water body in the title, Riverside yes. Studios. And before you went to Edinburgh, and right. because I knew about the production in terms of the people involved, I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go see my friends in a play, and yeah, yeah, I'm gonna come get fucked up, my friends. Wicked, <laughs> excellent. And then I, I missed the first day because I was late, like a dickhead. And then I saw the second showing, and I was in the front row. And all of you bastards were delivering your lines, looking at me, and I just fucking wept. Like I just cried through the whole fucking thing. Yeah. And that... I'm just like, fuck. I yeah. Sorry. Thanks, man. Nibhai was an intense um, kind of a, a thing. I think that for all of us. I mean, I can only speak for myself. Like I, I, I just was like, what. What's going on? I'm going on stage and I'm talking about my story. That I've, you know, something that I've never talked about like forever. Yeah. And I, I was just like, I need, I think I need counseling, please. And they were like, Oh, we have no budget for counseling. And like, what do you mean you have no budget for counseling? Like, that's the first thing you need to have around when you're going to deal with explosive things like that. Yeah. Um, So that's when yoga came into my life. Actually, I took yoga uh, on then, huh. and because of uh, yoga, that became my counselor. That I kind of just was, I could get through that whole nirbhaya stage. But uh, eventually, I left the play because I couldn't take it anymore. I, I was. Like, do you I, mind? I, do you mind talking about it now? Yeah, sure. What do you want? Because we could change it? the subject if you don't want to talk about it. That's all. No, I'm fine now. Oh, no. Okay. No, no. Cool. Cool. Uh, no, no. Oh, I'm like completely fine. 
I'm saying back then. Now yeah, 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 yeah. Well, because like, could, like for those that don't know, Nirbaya was a play that was. In fact, do you want to explain it, rather than yeah. me fucking mansplaining it? It was like the the Jyoti Singh Pandey, the big you know, uh, gang rape that happened in India that shook the whole world, and so it was telling her story, um, uh, with five other women breaking their own stories and integrating them into her stories and kind of just like kind of it was like the sisterhood kind of sort of thing that was happening so there were uh, a lot, you know there were other women all of them telling their own stories and i was one of them but a lot of people kind of at first thought it was kind of like vagina monologue where uh, it was like they thought it maybe it's someone else's story you know mm. and then they were like Oh wait a second! I think it's their own story. You know, it wasn't really clear in the beginning uh, what was really going on, but I think later on it became like quite clear. So, but for me, um, I think for a lot of us, we were talking about our own story for the first time as well. So that was really difficult, and to do it on stage, it was like next level. I remember mm. um, when Yal was writing the play. So mm -hmm. she started asking me about the thing. I was like, "Oh, I don't, I don't remember anything." And she was like, "She, she had to put me in a trance to get my story out. It was kind of cool, like, mm. I, yeah, yeah." So I mean, trauma can be like quite, um, quite deep. And I think I'm very glad actually I did it and it's over with. And you know, today it's like uh, obviously it's still traumatic when you sometimes think about it. But mm. it's not to the point where, oh my God, I can't handle it. You know what I mean? Mm. I'm way past that. And yeah. for me, it's more uh, the people that you know that are um, more aggressive. That is far worse than this. Is something that was not in my control. And I'm like over that, you know. But like I've dated some very severe men, so <laughs> I think those are that's worse in a way. Yeah. What the ongoing severity rather than what you experienced? Huh? Yeah. The ongoing severity rather than what you experienced—that kind of. Yeah. Thing. yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I think like I, the last relationship I was in was so horrible, and I think as women, you know, we know, uh, like this guy is a sexual offender, but you can't. You just think, oh, but maybe that woman is lying, and you know, oh, he's so sweet, and oh, he can't be that, and you know, but you know. The, Patterns, patterns are for real, and mm. uh, you know, once an offender, chances are an offender again. So I feel like my biggest thing uh, is probably uh, with my last relationship, horrible, horrible person. But the police here also are really horrible because mm. they don't really do much. Like go with a complaint, but oh, were you raped? Uh, no, sir, but I can get raped. Oh no no no! Sorry sorry. Get raped and then come back. I mean that's literally how bad it is here. Yeah, it's like. It's. Uh, I remember you talking about this in an interview actually. It's like uh, we won't prevent shit from happening. Why don't you just get fucked up and then we'll come and then we'll question you and say, oh, but it's your fault you got fucked up. To begin with. Why yeah, what, did you do something? What are you drinking? Uh, what were you wearing? All that kind of shit. Yeah, and also, why don't you do something about it? Why don't you come to us? And I'm like, uh, like four times. You know what I mean? So my uh, my whole plan is to kind of come up with something where you can stop violence before it becomes more violent. If you see signs, you can't nip it in the bud, man. You can't. Like I think it's. It's kind of a weird fucking approach where if you want to sue someone for material loss, you have to show a loss before you can do it, and that shouldn't be the case in terms of fucking safety. Do you know what I mean? It's like, well, I've been you know assaulted, and then you can do something about it. That's kind of fucked. Oh yeah, I mean, someone told me, oh, if you wanna you know file a case, um, just tell someone you've been raped, and they'll file it right away. And I'm like, that's really ridiculous. Like that's ridiculous that you know a woman is even. Told that you have to lie to get some sort of thing, but that being said, look at even me to India. Yeah, there is like uh, men who are walking around with FIRs on their heads. They're working like oh nothing, nothing happened, you know. So that's yeah, yeah. Here for you, 
I mean, America at least you know they are taking stands and there is a, a like a unity and there is shit that's happening. Look what happened with Harvey. You know, there is shit that is being taken. In I India, think it's a, it's about sort of rough faith in a system that will actually fucking do something about it. Yeah, yeah, that's also true. I mean, I'm just saying. But then you have you know when um, um, when someone complained about. What's his name? The guy who was in House of Cards, Kevin Spacey. Yeah, they kicked him off the fucking show. He was kicked off the show, Kevin Spacey.、Mm. Yeah, just because the people complained about him. In、mm. India, these guys are like, you know, making films. <laughs> They're given roles. I mean, it's insane. Like someone, like whatever, you know, to be the the coolest cat. But look at an Anurag Kashyap. He's out there making films. He has an FIR on his head. He has a Me Too allegation. But just because it's Anurag Kashyap, like he's making films for Netflix. Give me a break. That's like a big slap in the system. I mean, I don't care whether you think the girl is right wing, left wing, any wing. But you know, right wing or left wing, they're part of the same fucking bird, moron. You know. I tell you. I tell you what's 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 fucking shocking about that is that because there's no no trustable like reliable system in place, all you are left to is like trial by social media or by media. There's no it, system in place to fucking、is. deal with it. It's really ridiculous, and it's ridiculous. That's what I'm saying.、Uh, there are look at look at like Kailash Kher. He has been called up for Me Too. He's still doing concerts left, right, and center. So. So here's the thing: is that how would you like? Because you know, there, there's people that we both know that I know for a fact have been、uh, quite nasty bastards, and there is no doubt in my mind that those people should see some fucking something happen. But the system doesn't fucking work. And at the same time,、um, I don't know the people you've mentioned personally, and how is it? How how is the fuck are you going to prove what they've done or not? It's kind of a shit show. Yeah, but the thing is, if so many people stand up and they say something, I mean, there is, <laughs> there is enough. I mean,、mm. amazing. I'm telling you, if you look at the, the Me Too that happened here, look at what happened with this guy. I mean, I don't want to get into the whole thing, but even M J Akbar and Priya. I mean, the fucker took her to court. That. Oh、okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was fucked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What you've taken her to court for defamation, but what's great is that you know she stands tall today, and that's a big victory for all of us. Yeah,、mm. but but how is that even a victory? That that moron's taken her to court. I mean, that should not even have happened to begin with. I mean, that's that that's the thing. There's some. I mean, that combined with say some of the some of the stories from UP that come out, some of the sort of actual. Questions from chief ministers or statements that come out about, you know, will you marry the person you raped? All that kind of shit that comes into play,、um, combined with、uh, this extreme shift, it it feels like a shift to me because I'm looking out, you know, I'm outward looking in rather.、Um, but has it changed that much in the last five years, or was there, was it always the same? I I mean, it's. It's been the same. Nirbhaya happened. It was、mm. not a JP regime when that happened. I mean, to think that now—that's、uh, a bit ridiculous. Yeah,、uh, this has been going on. People are, are talking about it now. A lot of people think numbers have gone up, but a lot more are more vocal about it now. And.、Mm. Turned, but、uh, like how、um, progressive men、uh, who are called up, so-called, I'm not calling、mm. them so-called, and they're roaming around free. I, I, I am, I, I, I don't understand who else do you do you, to like hold responsible. For yeah, 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 yeah. Like I don't care about. I'm not into politics, and we、really, like talking about this weekend. And I'd much rather not have a headache. Much rather have a glass of wine. You know, but、yeah. when it comes to、um, even, or, you know, like even just I'm just talking about the film industry because that's the industry I am in now, and this is where I see myself、uh, for a very long time. And to see how ridiculous it is and how tainted it is,、mm. and 
how in the guise of being progressive um there are so many fakies running around forget the forget the fat ugly nasty producers who are anyways bonging the the actors and promising them jobs and roles that bonging that, bonging yeah <laughs> you know and and the sad part is there is no law that can do anything yeah i, I mean so yeah what do you do what do you do but that's the thing you've seen this shit from a track that no one else has you've like i said you've been in that whole situation for a long 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 time yeah i have and you've and you've seen that I'm, i i i have no doubt that you've seen more shit than i ever will oh i think you're making me out to be far cooler than i am mr ne- are a basket i've known you for like <laughs> fucking nearly decade shut up oh two decades two de- hey fuck two decades bastard so i mean that's the thing you have an insight that's just way more valuable and equally the thing is is that you know when i say you've been someone that's slayed demons and called these topics out in the public domain yeah that's, I- that's pretty badass and and i'm i'm shocked that it hasn't had uh in fact i don't want to jinx it but i'm i'm glad that it hasn't had any further repercussions on you um have mouth little speak ha huh. ha huh. i yeah. mean uh for, i mean of course it has repercussions what are you talking about there have been a spring people just showed up at my door i'm like how did you land up here um <laughs> oh my god sorry so you just reminded me In Bandra one day when some dude tried to punch me I ran to Madawa and jumped in. Yes. So <laughs> Yeah. I mean this kind of shit happens all the time here, man. That's I mean, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean you your life is in danger just by walking on a Bombay street. You can get hit by anything. So forget someone else coming to get you. I this is just Bombay it is, yeah. Mm. Bye. uh i mean i i walk everywhere and every day i almost die because yeah. i'm just walking on the street and hey cuz that's just fucking india that's just what happens yeah exactly that's just what happens, man. and that's why it's so cool <laughs> india that is true i mean i i i never actually realized that you were only there from 2002 and it makes a lot more sense about why we um connected which was awesome well, No, but I grew up in India. I mean, I I here. know that. I know that. I understand about that, but I'm just like, okay, shit, that was when we re sort of we we kind of became friends was like 2000 2003. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. But it's just been um, you know, and it's the longest I ain't seen you. I haven't seen you in so long. And your hair's really grown. I whoever hair not- I can't get a fucking haircut here. I'm not allowed to. We are in lockdown 3. Really? Yeah, I I'm not allowed to get a haircut for another month. Oh, how long have you guys been in lockdown like It opens and closes. It's like a gate. Okay, but like you can't even step out of the house. Is it that bad? No, I can go out the house, but where to go? No pubs are open. No. I I want to get my nails done, for example, and my hair done, but no. Oh. Oh, you want or see friends or something, but yeah. No. I didn't know that. For how how long have you guys been in lockdown? Um the the third lockdown began I think in November. What? You've been in lockdown since November? Oh yeah, it's been open and closed like for a year. So that this is why I've been doing these chats. So you are week 50 of me staying relatively sane and washing once a week to speak to a friend. Oh, but I'm feel so sorry for your audience because they're like please you are just bored the fuck out of us every week. Buddy, buddy, they could. You know what? It's the internet day. They can just choose not to watch. There's so much other <laughs> shit to watch. If you know, if people want to engage with me or watch me getting drunk with a friend of mine who's shaking her hair like crazy, that's awesome. Yeah. Oh my god, you remind me of Daryl Hannah in in Blade Runner. That's right. Take this, mofos. Yeah. Take this. <laughs> I am jealous. I'm so jealous of your hair. But you know what that's the other thing right so through lockdown we were talking about you and how you coped with it you went to calm shit for a while and all that kind of shit Yeah I did And I finally convinced you to do this on the promise of A being drunk and B talking about your film festival but now let's talk about what you did Uh let's kind of listen to some uh You want to play some more of my music Ah This is but what we did But loud like 
so they can hear it. Okay, so this is the track that we put out for Nirbhay actually to make some to to sort of aid the. Um... Can you hear that? Yeah. Uh, so everybody, you got a headbang now because it's that. It's not headbangy. It's fucking jelte oh, jelte that open the play. Right. Sorry. 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 How is this headbangy? <laughs> You've become full auntie now. Everybody headbang to jelte jelte. What the fuck? How the hell do you do? I, I, I want to see that. I think some fucking like punk gig has to play jelte jelte at it. Like, dun, dun, dun. Some death metal gig where they played yeah. Oh, by the way, I turned fifty this year. I turned. Yeah. You don't look a day over, like however old you think you are. Yeah, sure. I knew that was coming. That's such a standard fucking mind. <laughs> but you know what? The the thing is, I'm glad you're having fun. It's good to see you fucking exuberant and enjoying, which is how I normally know you anyway. That's right. There we go. Mm. Haji. Huh? Uh. But really, uh. The, the brakes. This is produced by engineers. Prash. Ooh, prash. It's so good. You know, I picked this song for the uh, for the play. Oh, did you? Yeah, it's one of my favorite songs. No and way. I, yeah, and it's a it's going to go Dude, when I when I when I when I saw the play, I started fucking crying at that point. And then when you guys, so you Priyanka and Borna, I know personally. Right. And when when the whole sort of um, confessional aspect of it came out, I was just in fucking tears. Um, but then it was like, it was interesting because I saw the play in various, I saw it maybe three or four times every time yeah, I came you, to England. You did, yeah, yeah. And, and it was, it still fucked me up, relentlessly fucked me up, but I could then look beyond it to see the production or the audio and look at the cues and things, which was really a weird position to kind of be in. I was just like, yeah, uh, it, it, it felt like I was punishing myself every time. <laughs> I can only fucking imagine what it was like for you guys, you know? Fuck. Yeah. Man, that, that, that was um, a really crazy, crazy, crazy time of my life. And I'm actually um, thankful for it in retrospect. Um, but I, I can't do it again. Like mm. this. Yeah, yeah. And it's I, too much, I think, maybe. It, it's just, a, it's very, 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 like, yeah. Uh, I mean, I just feel like anything that deals with real life trauma that's not like uh, written. I think it's it's like uh, th there are certain protocols that one must have and definitely have a therapist around <laughs> if you are going to do things like that. Um, yeah. So hence, uh, I, I, I am not a big fan of any real life uh, dramatics like this. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, I don't mind playing a part in a play where I come and I act, loo -loo, and I go home, and then, then that's all good. But mm. like, real life shit, no, no, no. But then, but then you kind of, you, you then took a deep dive in yourself once again. I think I drop a pencil. There you go. Uh, with uh, Sindhustan, right? So we're going back to your legs, right? So taking the story of Sindh and putting it on your body in ink was a fucking masterstroke because you're obviously a tattooed vixen and like writing the story of your your the land from whence you came onto your body is something that's just fucking brilliant thank you so much what a great pickup line that would be also have you seen my come on you have know? you seen where i am from do you, do you <laughs> i'm from <laughs> but uh yeah if you guys haven't seen my legs i'm so sorry for you but please google my legs and uh Cease in the sun because the whole story of uh, partition and migration is told through tattoos on legs. And yeah. I, I, I was able to, there was one bit where I was like, okay, so I got this done years ago. Man, what does it say? You know that, it's a swastika. You know oh, about yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you I, know about this. 
Yes, I uh, but I, I got it redone for a BBC documentary uh, called Me and My Swastika, right? So it was oh. like telling a story through tattoos, obviously. And then yes. you went to the nth degree and put your whole place of like origin onto your like legs. 15 hours tattooing. That's ridiculous. No. I w- it was 15 days, sorry. 15 10 days. days. 10 days. 10 days. Okay. Yeah. Did it in 10 both legs. That's fucking crazy shit right there. And I like the putting your culture on your body is something I, I agree with, but this is amazing. Thanks, man. Thank you. But what's amazing is that, you know, I have these wonderful legs and they go everywhere I go. So I carry my land with me. So I feel like in that way, it's really special. And I mean, um, I don't have to wear pants ever again. <laughs> I mean... I'm yeah. not sure they go all the way up, so I'm not too sure. And I'm <laughs> sure there's a certain amount of maintenance that one has to do to maintain the illusion. <laughs> exactly. But listen, now I must go to sleep. Okay, tell her. Because it's like 12 my time, guys, and I go to sleep and my wine's also kind of over. And you have, what day is it of your film festival tomorrow? Wench Films. Oh, yes. So please uh, join us tomorrow as well and every day till Sunday. And we have great panels. And on Sunday, there is a very special panel called Screen Queens. And I bet you didn't know there are a lot of Indian women making horror films. And no, I didn't. It's going to scare the shit out of you. That's fucking amazing. <laughs> yeah. So... Uh, Please uh, watch our film festival. It's, Where do uh, they go to watch it? What is it? What, so like... you go to uh, wenchfilmfestivals.com and you will get the link. Or you can go to Movie Saint. Saint as in S-A-I-N-T-S, like Saint Sinner. Movie Saint. Mm-hmm. And you will see Wench Film Festival on there. So go to the festival. Check us out. Uh, we're almost over. I mean, Sunday is our last day. Grab some amazing support in the cinema and indie women directors. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Love you, Sapna. Thank you Love for doing this. Mwah. See you in the real life Bye. soon. Yes. Bye. Mwah. Bye.